Welcome back to the Tailoring Talk magazine and part four of our huge Casino Royale spoiler review. We rejoin the action at the table of the third poker game in the movie. There's so much poker in this film. Um, But we start off with a quick debate, mainly driven by me, on whether this film really is that grounded in realism. And then Phil gets to take centre stage again and fact check all of the poker action that is going on. If you have stuck with us through parts one to three, thank you so, so much. And if you're listening to this for the first time, you stumbled in and you have no clue what is going on. Basically, we have done our spoiler review of Casino Royale. This is part four. There are parts one, two, and three. Feel free to go back and uh, and listen. But thanks to everybody for supporting the show. Without further ado, let's get into this fourth and final part of Casino Royale. Um, so there we go. So he goes back to wow. the poker game again. Man, like... I couldn't do anything for a few days after my accident, or if I cut my little finger or something, I'm done. Do you know what I mean? This guy, he's like got like almost killed by two terrorists. Then he has a heart attack and almost dies, or he does die and then gets brought back to life. And then he's straight playing poker again. Like how how does he keep so calm? It's amazing. Um, mm. This is why we love Bond, right? So then he plays yeah. more poker. So this is like let's call this mm. the third round of poker. And there's there's a hand here where the river, Phil, is ace, ace, six of spades, six of hearts, ace. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I love yeah, how so, I love so how he's probably not even looking at what I'm looking at, but from what I've just said, he's like, Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It's like I'm talking it's like Neo in the Matrix, but it's like all yeah. all hearts and clubs and spades and diamonds, dude. Yeah. So, yeah, on this particular hand, which is the last hand, um, although we don't see the action before, we know that Le Chiffre was the first to act. He raised it to two million. Bond called the two million. And then um, the the long-haired Chinese bloke uh, was in the small blind. He called the two million. So he only only cost him a million five. And then uh, big bloke... um, Defended the big blind and it only cost him one million to call, but it left him with um, it left the big guy with five million. It left long haired guy with six million, and the two big stacks were uh, in the hand as well, uh, Le Chiffre and Bond. So on the flop, it was Ace of Hearts, Eight of Spades, and Six of Spades. All got checked around, and the turn card is the dream card for Bond because it's the Four of Spades. All right, we don't know that yet, but it's pretty obvious that that's the card you needed gets checked around again very deceptive and then the ace of spades comes out so that importantly makes long haired uh, guy his hand um because he has um the high flush but then the big guy next to him who also went all in that made his hand because he had um two eights that made a full house so he had Three eights and two aces. But so what, they've already gone all in. So, sorry. So what you're saying is that Shifu should have folded or they should have written no. it so that Shifu had like a, an no. eight. No, what should have happened? Can we, get the, can we please get the short what Disney happened, version of this? What should have happened <laughs> was that the two blinds, because they had really decent hands before the flops should have both gone all in and then Le Chiffre and Bond would have folded before the flop and then they would have um, chopped the pot but they didn't do that so what ended up happening was mm. they checked it around Le Chiffre made his hand but he made a really silly raise on the end which didn't tell anything and then when Bond went all in he was trapped and he had to call off the rest of it and that's why we ended up with Bond winning 100 million, 110 million is what he won in the end Brilliant. And so then, I'm confused. No, 115 million. Yeah, I mean, Le Chiffre had an eight, didn't he? That's the second best hand that anyone could have. I thought he had an eight. Le Chiffre had a six. He had a full house. Yeah. Yeah. So it's it's the third from the top. Um, But surely then, um, that's the second best hand a player could have. And surely he wouldn't have betted on that. He would have stopped. 
I'll get confused. Well, that's maybe. the thing. Yeah. Right. He he looked down. Mm. There's the two small stacks that have gone all in. He's not worried about those two. It doesn't matter if those two win because, you know, all that matters yeah. is that he's going to take most of Bond's chips and he thinks he's got Bond crushed with his high full house because he had three aces and two sixes. So that's pretty high up. And he thinks that Bond might have just a high flush, but didn't realize that Bond had a straight flush. What he should have done is he should have got away from it when he made that raise and and Bond went all in. He should have just folded and then given himself another chance to play back at him in another hands. So it's a sloppy final hand, basically. Yeah, he played it badly. Per- personally, they'd be make- making a joke like about sloppy how... final hands as well. Sorry, carry on, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> well, per- personally, I I just I like how much time they spent on it, mm. I, because I I do think like the whole film is about poker. If you don't spend the time focusing on it, then <laughs> it's just going to feel like a side side bit. So I I I honestly was like, oh oh no, he's definitely lost. And then, and then it was like, it's got those two. I oh, got wait a minute. Oh wow. Okay, but so, it, it, but I was. It took me a while to work it out. Obviously, that they were quicker okay, on the table. You got... um, but it's but it's just nice. It's nice to have it. So I think it's okay, it's a brilliant. positive. Yeah, Poker, I, mean, I, it's just, it's just, I think we've rubbish, covered it now. Blah, blah, but it's blah, good. He lost. Bond won. <laughs> moving on. Thing is, right. You know. Thing is, if I've you're got a, a standing desk, guy, like you lot are all If you're sat a solid poker player, yeah. If you're a solid poker player, I guess it it's basically feels less realistic because one going one guy going all mm. in on blind on a river that paired the board is like, that's not great, is it? Well, I think I mean as poker movies go, the one go to poker movie is a film called Rounders, which is Edward Norton and uh, Matt Damon, and a Bond actress, a oh, Bond girl, is also in is also in Rounders. So um, it's it's a very very good poker film, but Casino Royale, as I said from the beginning, is not a poker movie, yeah. and that's the, the nice. distinction. Look what YouTube sent me! It's made oh, of wow. Lego. What? Yeah. That's cool. It's a YouTube did button, you... isn't it? Great, Bob, Bobby. Did did you just make that yourself out of bits and pretend it's from YouTube? Or did you well, you lot were talking about poor poker. <laughs> yeah. No, YouTube sent me this. <laughs> Oh, that's cool. That's great. Yeah, you get wow. a Lego one. Wow. That's just the first awesome. one you get for your first milestone. You get a glass one. God, I'm so glad this came in handy to break that fucking conversation up. So, um, so Bond wins. I, I and, love that. Sorry, Phil. And uh, what's his face? The Schiffer is on the run, but he kidnaps Vesper in the process. Bond goes after him in the Aston Martin, and this gives us a Guinness Book of World Records. Well, up until most recently. cannon rolls in a car up until recently. Why, who beat yeah. it? Uh, the four guy did. Uh, they oh, aimed okay. to beat it. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Said that. yeah. Yeah. So anyway, at the time, it was a record-breaking stunt. The car flipped seven times in the air, achieved using a nitrogen cannon embedded in the car to ensure it flipped correctly. And it also demonstrated the film's commitment to practical effects. So there we go. They flipped that beautiful car. Bond is captured. And then we get one of the most difficult torture scenes to watch in the history of cinema if you are a red-blooded male. Because Can I say, I, cuts... in my notes, Bobby, Bobby, I call this mm. the naked chair bollocking scene. Okay, good. good. Do you like that name for it? <laughs> it's a bit long. It yeah. doesn't really roll Very off nice the tongue. Though. All right, okay. Mm. Um, maybe you could call it the... Let's think of names for the chair. The bollock basher. The ball buster. Yeah. The... I no, can't, I can't okay, beat fine. that. Moving on. So, But this is a very difficult scene to watch. And it is, it is yeah. very, very true to the uh, equivalent scene in the original novel. Um, yeah. It's very, very painful to watch. I think it was very well filmed. It mm-hmm. was very well acted. Um but, you know, where you see um, a desperate Le Chiffre, and this is actually what I really kind of like about this villain, because a lot of people are like, he's a throwaway villain because he's not like the big, big bad. But, you know, he's different. You know, usually Bond villains are like wanting to take over the world or destroy the world or one of the two. Whereas this guy, you know, he's a middleman that basically takes your money, promises to double it, 
and you know unfortunately he comes up against Bond on this occasion and he fucks up and then he gets killed by Mr. White who suddenly appears and shoots him um, and kind of in the process sort of ends up saving Bond yeah I, I like, yeah, weird, I like the it? fact that, that it becomes a bit more complex and that actually Shifu wasn't the big bad that's quite cool a little sort of twist but do they well they can't kill him because he's yeah, got well, the he's money he's got the code so to access the money hasn't it, he he can't because yeah. there's a scene before she gets kidnapped where they're having dinner and yeah. he it's looks cool at her necklace well. and says it's like a Georgian love knot or something and that means that mm-hmm. she's got a boyfriend there's a bloke in the background and this now starts to set up the last half an hour of the film yeah. because we're all kind of thinking okay fine the film's done Right, we'll have some sort of little finale and then the end credits will roll. But there's a whole other bonus episode coming because we're in for another... Yeah, it's a, it's trap. a trap. It's a trap. Um, because, so he's I, in again, rehab. Yeah. Uh, getting his balls well, healed. Well, this is it. This is it, Bobby. Can I just have a little side note here? <laughs> right, yeah. Because, um, so you've got the whole kind of uh, math the sheep are shot dead Bond's in a medical room Mathis tries to get uh, info out of Bond which hints at maybe some of Mathis inf- like not quite the- and tries to poison yeah. him but Eva Green right Vesper she turns up she's very pretty and all the rest and is getting a bit a little bit sexy and raunchy with him and all I can think of is isn't Bond's knob broken at this point well, why, what's, what could he do right now in that medical room <laughs> like, is that not the worst thing for a chap <laughs> For someone to go right, let's get let's get let's get busy after you've had your your knackers bat, bashed liberally for ten minutes. So in the novel, I mean, he must have been there for I've a long the... time. Maybe he's maybe his balls heal as quickly as his scars on his face. Or I don't know. I mean, I don't know. You know. So in the novel, uh, Vesper is Vesper is a secretary. She's not even like a treasurer yeah. or anything. And Bond's very disdainful of her. You know, like she's not anything to look at. Why the hell do we need a woman to? you know, look after right. the money, et cetera, et cetera. And then when we get to this bit in the novel where he goes to a clinic because he needs to heal and all the rest of it, he then decides to have sex with her, um, partly because, and this isn't a direct quote, I'm paraphrasing, but partly because, well, you know, she's not that bad to look at and, you know, I'm not as repulsed by her as I was when I first met her. And the second reason is also the primary reason I also need to test that my testicles and my dick are still working so there you go oh well, there you go Maybe. but they just Maybe added a little I just I just have romance yeah. as well for yeah. the modern version I was just thinking if you've really had damage in that area I would it, I just have the Austin Powers scene you know Margaret Thatcher on a cold day. <laughs> 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 just stop, stop, keep away. So, um, uh, so, anyway. so anyway, the the Swiss banker turns up, big smile on his face. He's funny. Also, he's a funny character. He's uh, so funny. And he's like, oh, you know, we need to give you your money. So, what's the password? And Vesper goes to enter the password it's for mental. him, and he says, it's yeah. it's Vesper. Yeah, is the password and. The, her acting here, I don't know if you guys noticed, but she sort of stops when she realises her name was the password. And usually if you make a girl's name your password, it means you're in love with her. Anyone listening, my wife's name yeah. is not any of my fucking passwords, but I do love her. Um, it's just all cyber security. Anyway, um, so... Um, but But then when she sits down as the banker's doing the rest of the transaction and packing up, if you look at her reaction she's got her hands over her face like you know oh my god because she knows what she's about to do we don't know it at the time but yeah. the but Eva Green's acting is just so layered and oh, it's so yeah. nuanced it's yeah. just brilliant you see she just when he says off we this in her Mendel and she's just got her hands in her face because she she's knows like that, that she's got like she's got she's to like betray that. him yeah she's got yeah, to betray I'm, I'm him it right now Oh, the Vesper. It's also it also gives the audience a clue that there's more to this, um, because initially you're like, "Wow, we're done, yeah. awesome, yeah. roll the roll the credits," and then she starts crying, and then you're like, "Whoa, what's happening?" And then it goes happy again. And you're like, "Oh, oh, must be me. Just forget it. Yeah. Never mind." 
and then and then we carry on with the rest of yeah. the scene, don't we? So so then you know we get a bit more lovey dovey stuff on island. They go on a bit of holiday or whatever. They're getting lovey dovey with to each Venice. other. His dick works. His dick works. So Yay! That's all good. Um, and then he decides to resign with what is possibly the worst resignation letter in history. So <laughs> he says, "M." Should have got, I, got Chat hmm. GPT to do it, shouldn't he? Basically, yeah, uh, that <laughs> didn't exist at that point. You don't need that. Even even at that time, there was I resigned. Well, well I mean, to be fair, <laughs> I, I I did a couple of those oh, using I resigned. I'm not going to give. I'm not going to give you time. I'm just going to. I'm just going to give you a, a standard message. Off you go. Anyway. He says, "M, I hereby tender my resignation with immediate effect. Sincerely, what's this? Sincerely, James Bond. That's what it. Thank you." Yeah. yeah. Uh I mean he does think to sell it, send it on an MI6 confidential secure content channel so that's good. So he resigns. M probably receives it and sort of laughs and it's like stupid little prick. Um and then this is when uh Vesper kisses Bond goodbye and goes to the bank and M calls Bond. So not not quite. What? So they do yeah. they go round yeah. Venice. There's one more, Don't there's one they? more bonk and then, scene. And then they they have another bonk. They go around Venice, but I'm just trying to speed this up yes, but so Bobby, we get to the end. What? Bobby, but they st- I've still got to point out they do have a bonk here. And that, you know, it's part okay, of my job. is this the last bonk in the film? Yes. Okay, so it's two what's, bonks, where's the bonkometer? Same bonk, same where's the bonkometer? Well, I mean, it's, it's no, the well, same no, person. If it, no, I think it's a bonk per bonk, not like like if you... Bonk the same person five times. It's one bonk. No, it's five bonks. So how many bonks? Okay, well, I mean, it's two bonks, but I mean, there might be more bonks. If you include the bonk in the hospital room, that's three bonks, isn't it? That's definitely a bonk. Yeah. Yeah. So um, three, I suppose. Okay. What was the? Where was the first bonk? Uh, they, don't they do it in the hotel room earlier on? No. Oh, oh no, no, the the Venice I don't hotel think room. They do. No, but that's what we're talking about right now. No, the one before that. <sighs> The the uh, Montenegro. No, they, don't, they don't do it in Montenegro. No, that's two then, just two. So I I think it's yeah, two. two. Okay, yeah. perfect. Okay, yeah. I think in this new generation of bonds, we've we've got to count every bonk as a bonk. Okay. Yeah, I, I mean, look, can, you've like, got to take all the together. bonks you can get, like with the gadgets, right, Alex? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Abs- yeah. Absolutely. I mean, that is. I've been yeah. sitting ar- sitting around yeah. half yeah. the episode. In which case, um, ten- <laughs> two tennis players give him a sideways glance. That's. Four and five. M <laughs> tells him off. Solange. Six. <laughs> Solange. Solange. Uh, the, Solange Nass- kisses the, his Nassau, chest. the Nassau receptionist. Yeah, yeah. she likes Nassau him. receptionist. The, yes, that's the, true. Yeah. the two terrorists that sort of get very close quarter combat with him. Yeah. Right? The free that's runner. T- that's touchy feely, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So so she yeah. buggers off and okay. bonds yeah. uh, that you know it's the typical thing you know those of us that have been cheated on have been in this situation where she yeah. leaves her phone behind it goes off you go and look at it there's a message from another bloke I may or may not be speaking from personal experience anyway um so okay I need to, then yeah, he gets please a carry call. on because I need to take a moment <laughs> Well, he gets a call, doesn't he, from M and 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 the treasury agent saying, "Hello, can we have our money back, please?" Like, what? And and yeah, fine, resign if you like. And yeah, but we need our cash, dude. Sorry. It's not yours. Um, and then that's yeah. where he ends up at the sinking uh, Venetian building, yeah. um, which is a big set yes. piece that took about three weeks to film, four weeks, I think. Um, and I'm presuming at- they used um, models for this as well. Uh, miniatures. Do they use miniatures mm, for this? Nice. They use miniatures, so it involves a building in Venice sinking into the canal. The sequence combined practical effects with CGI, requiring detailed planning and execution to achieve a realistic collapse. Special effects supervisor Chris Corbold designed the sequence, creating a miniature model for initial test before executing the final scene with a mix of practical sets and digital enhancements. There's a lot of fighting. Oh, wow. There's a suitcase full of money that eventually goes to Mr. White. Somehow oh, yeah. he gets it uh, and he runs off with it. And then Vesper is trapped in the lift. And this is where we get 
one of the most hard to watch scenes in a non horror movie that I've ever seen up to that point until Paddington 2, which kind of replicated the scene. If you've yeah. seen Paddington 2, you'll know what I'm yeah, talking about. Does. That was harrowing, wasn't it, John? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Gee, poor Paddington. It's a kid's film. Yeah, well, why did they do that to him? Even though he survives, but anyway, spoiler alert. We should spoiler. do Paddington at some point. It's a nice outfit, isn't it? Um, yeah. <laughs> so, and it's kind of a spy movie, Paddington, if you think about it. Yeah. It's, right? Spy thriller, mystery. Anyway. He's back in um, Rosny for the third film. I feel like you're reaching a bit yes, hard. Yes, I can't wait for that. It won't be as good yeah. as the first two, but anyway. Um, Hugh Grant was brilliant in Paddington too. <laughs> so, um, yeah, house sinking. She's trapped in the lift. He dives down to save her. She takes the key out and throws it away, which begs the question that she could have got out at any time. And then she actually looks at him and expels all the lung air from her lungs. And then she breathes all that water in and kills herself. Is I mean, she really dead, though? Is she dead, though, really? Because she's fucking yeah. dead, she, though? John. She's proper Is dead. She, she's dead. I wrote this down in my notes. Is she dead, really? It would have been... Yeah. It would have made Spectre they... more fun if they'd had the Spectre of Eva Green. Ooh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Vesper comes back. <laughs> the Spectre of Vesper. Um, <laughs> so, uh, and then the Ghostbusters turn up. All, all nine of them, or however many of them there are now. Oh my god, I saw that the other day, by the way. <laughs> Tragic. Nice. Did Amy enjoy that one? Right. Frozen Empire. We don't. You talk don't talk about, about, it. about it. It, it, it was fine. It, it's, it's okay. It's just not. It's not great. But then, like, stop expecting it to be like nineteen eighties. Uh, just enjoy yeah. it for what it is. Okay. A bit of fun. A bit of yeah, we'll talk about fun. that another time. Um, so uh, <laughs> so that that's it. He tries to resuscitate her. She's totally dead. Um, Emma is back on the phone. It's like your resignation was bullshit. Now you've got a job to do because uh, he's going to go after Mr. White. He says the bitch is dead, trying to show that he's job got done. no emotion whatsoever. And Job's then done. We... Bitch is dead. Job's done. Bitch is dead. And then yeah. he, Mr. White drives a Jaguar, I think it's an XJR, um, gets out and is sort of looking over the lake. It's probably in Como or somewhere. Is this back in Montenegro? <laughs> XJ8. Probably. Yeah, whatever. <clears throat> I don't know. But the point is that we get Bond to turn up in one of the best suits, outfits that Bond has ever worn in any film, which is the three-piece Brioni with that navy with the little micro hairline stripe, that ice blue shirt, that beautiful tie. He looks fucking baller, and he's got that um, machine gun thing in his hand as well, just sort of hold, like shoots White in the mm-hmm. leg. White's crawling away, and then he finally says it. The name's Bond. James Bond. And then we get the music, and then we cut to credits, and we're all clapping away in the cinema in Leicester Square, like, oh my god, that was the best Bond film ever. But was it? Ratings, people, Phil, because we haven't seen you for such a long time, and I need to update all your scores, so we're going to have to have a little sidebar and talk about that. (laughs) But uh, ratings, Phil, where does this stand for you in the pantheon of Bond films that we've seen so far? Um, I think this is um, this basically changed how I viewed um, James Bond. You know, he was a piece of eye candy for the ladies. He was as hard as nails. He was almost it was almost superhero like the way he was handled himself. The film was very much of his time, and and the film was very much on trend with parkour and the poker. Um, I'm looking at it on the merits of a Bond movie and it had all the elements in place, maybe slightly less in the bonking department, but it had everything, it had every element um, in place. They'd updated, they'd improved the cars, they improved the locations, they brought the glamour back. I'm going to give this a solid nine and a half out of ten. Whoa, that is high from Phil because he is a tough taskmaster. But brilliant. Alex? 
You've criticised my ratings. No, what? I, when have I ever? We, no, you've said no, 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 no. They're really inconsistent. Hey, heart of gold, dude. Heart of gold. Okay, the, you've got a brand to live up to. Don't start fucking you... attacking me down the camera. This is, this is technically because we haven't officially announced anything. This is still my show. Okay, so remember okay. number, number, th- n- number three. Show. Remember where your place is. Yeah, I've got my little. This is the YouTube button. Remember. Okay. And you don't Bobby's know what get I've done underneath that house stroke. of yours. It's going to stroke a white pussy. Oh. Exactly. Oh. Okay. okay. Um, so, I do have a rating. Uh, this is one... This so, is just, the, Alex, can I just say on that? Highest rating can I just I've say given. on that, with all due respect? Yep. Um, which means none. <laughs> um, <laughs> we've never criticised your ratings. What we do is, is we, ch- you know, we challenge you and we question you <laughs> in the spirit of accuracy because sometimes like last time you you rated oh, that film x right and all john and i did is we said yeah. john you're with me on this all john and i did is we said by the way you rated this film the same as that one did you enjoy this more or less and then you've got <coughs> oh actually that's all we do we just challenge you in the sake of, of just wanting accurate ratings that's all so that's fine. I need more numbers okay. <laughs> because 10 isn't high enough then, if that's the case. Because the problem is that you'll go, oh, nine and a half? Or is it just the same as Russia with love? And I'll be like, no, it's better okay, than Russia look, with you love. Can go, we can go to... Is it a 10 then? We can uh, go to quarters. <laughs> so you could go 9.75, 9.25. I, do, you, do you know what? I'm going to give it... I'm going to give it a 10 out Whoa. of 10. And I'm going to give it a 10 out of 10 with the proviso that I may go over 10 later because otherwise you're going to going to pick, okay. pick at me. Um, but I, I genuinely, while it's not it's not perfect, I really can't find much fault with it. it and, and I think for what it did to the the franchise, I, I just I, I honestly, I just think it's it has to be a 10. So that's that's my that's my vote. And also because it's a bit higher than Russia with love. And uh, Moonraker was a nine, and you're just going to pull those no. pull those out. I'm the, not. Out I'm the not even, if I'm not careful. No, so I'm not. I'm not. We will. <laughs> so yeah, we'll give come it back a 10. because we're going to do an ultimate tailoring talk ranking of all of the movies when we get to all the right. end of this. But I'm not going to pull you apart. Ten out of ten. Totally respect it, John. <laughs> oh I will God, give shut it. Shut up. Uh, I you have, got what you wanted, Alex. My... <laughs> Alex. I have my notes here in front of me because I always write notes about the film. Oh, no. Order. You see, you attacked right. the wrong person, Alex. So, He's going to fuck you over. <laughs> no, I have my notes. Now, I watched this um, <laughs> film 10 days ago. 10 days ago. And I have my notes in front of Ooh. me. And I gave it a perfect 10. We can't see that. 10. Yeah, you can. Oh, perfect 10. Perfect Why 10. is it so I perfect, it perfect 10. Mm-hmm. Why is it because perfect? Because I think mm-hmm. it had... I think, first of all... It revitalised and saved the franchise after the debacle of Buy, Buy Another Day and its f- f- funny glow-in-the-dark car. And I think um, it created uh, a whole new generation of people who love Bond. Uh, I think Craig brought people together. I think um, it made Bond more believable. It made Bond more sympathetic. Um Quantum of Solace, notwithstanding, it made a lot of very, very good Bond films. We'll come to that later on when we write that. But I just think, when I, I remember watching this 10 days ago and thinking, this is bloody good. This is a bloody good Bond film. Uh, and um, I just wrote down, Craig is God, um, in, my, in the first three lines uh, in the black and white scene. <laughs> it's a perfect 10, this film, much like uh, Ether Green. Yeah. So... That's so Agreed. For me, Daniel Craig is the is a perfect Bond. Um, mm. I think he's he, he probably does edge it as my favourite, and it is really difficult now because uh, you know Sean Connery. I really do love as Bond, but you know I just think what whichever of the films you look at, whether the film was brilliant as this one was or it wasn't quite hitting it as Spectre did, Craig himself as Bond is brilliant. I really believe he gives it his all every single movie and he really, really does care. 
no matter what the tabloids etc or his his critics say about him i really do think he has cared so much for this character and for these films and he's given everything that he possibly could to them um i'm i'm i really want to go 10 but i still can't get past a couple of little things that i just thought you know i can't forgive overlooking those little tiny little details in editing i just don't understand how directors do it uh, and it's just a bit of the continuity stuff and some other bits and bobs and that bloody was it the Monday? Yeah, yeah. Sorry, I was, just, like, I was trying to bullshit my way through that one. It's, it's the fucking Monday, yeah. So I'm gonna go. So, so I'm. It is the Bond film that I'm not gonna do the. Did I like it more than From Russia with Love? Blah blah blah. Because they're very different. We're now in a completely. I mean, who'd different compare era. previous scores, Bobby? Who would do that anyway? Absolutely. You, can't. Um, you would. So <laughs> yeah. I'm gonna give it nine point seven five. And I'm not looking at our spreadsheet. I'm going to give it 9.75. So I'm just going to nick a tiny bit off for the Ford Mondeo. But it is why? pretty That's brilliant, much Bobby. the perfect Bond film. That score. That score yeah. is brilliant because the because you've given it 9.75, yeah? And the Mondeo was a Mondeo 2.5, you see. So 9.75 take away 0.25. <laughs> so 10 take away... Anyway, the math works out. 10 take away 2.5, 0.25 is 9.75. Are you running the beta version of uh, iPad OS? <laughs> At the moment, because you no, know I've had the, three. I've had the... I've had three glasses of of, of beer. So um, oh, okay, that's what it, what does it look brilliant. <laughs> look, guys, we loved it. So that's great. It's really really nice to to have Phil back. Thank you so much, Phil. Yeah. Thank you for your contributions and for all of your insights into the world of poker. So I will use that hashtag in the hope that it gets more views from that audience. <laughs> um, <laughs> And, and I'll, I'll edit a special version that hasn't got any poker talk in it whatsoever for everybody else. But no, no, it's truly well, brilliant. You can't, you can't avoid it in this film. No, you can't. No, and no, I get a feeling that when we next get together That's as a true. family, Phil, that I'm not going to avoid it. about 10 minutes either. long. Um, but brilliant. Guys, thank you. Oh. Have you... Sorry, Phil. I would, no, I'd, I'd rather not play you at poker if you don't mind, because you, as I say, you don't know when you've got good cards, so it's impossible to bluff you. So Cha- <laughs> I'm chaos. <laughs> yes. Um, yes. I'm the fire starter. Right. So, uh, guys, thank you. Have you had fun? Oh yeah, definitely. Uh, it's been a blast. <laughs> yes. Brilliant. We've managed. So I'm, I'm amazed we managed to equal the length of the film with our podcast. That's the most amazing thing. I know. It's beautiful Almost how we've minute. done that, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, guys, thank you so so much. Um, I'm not going to make. We we will have an announcement to make in in the coming episodes, but hopefully, um, one of us will be back together with me. That made no sense. It's late. Uh, I shouldn't have got a standing desk. This was the worst idea in the world. Um, but we <laughs> will have some announcements coming. So stay tuned for that. Thank you so so much for joining us and to those of you that have stuck through this very long episode uh, remember for I might break it up into smaller parts actually remember for regular show updates follow us on Instagram at Taylor and Talk Podcast and you can support the show at the link in the show notes you can also get in touch with us by hitting the text to show link in your show notes and that will send a text message to the show directly and you can say whatever you want if it's nice I'll read it on air you can also help massively by reviewing us and giving a rating if you're podcast listening app allows if you're watching on youtube please hit that like and subscribe button for more of this pandemonium we will return to review quantum of solace and until then take care we'll see you on the next 007 episode of tailoring talk bye 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 stay with some chairs with holes in